The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. God has so many different characteristics. He is such a complex God, and the truth is, we will never be able to understand Him. How on earth can you try to understand an eternal being? Let's just focus on His eternity. Your mind and my mind cannot comprehend the magnitude of eternity. That for eternity in the past, God has always been there before. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. God was there for eternity past. Think of it. We often think of eternity in the future in terms of heaven and hell. But just try to comprehend the reality that God has had an eternity in the past. Everything started with Him. And we all know that everything will finish with Him. You cannot understand God. You can understand such glory. Look at the glory of God in the heavens. And even the stars testify of Him. Their voice speaks throughout the earth. There is no place or language where their voice is not heard. But let's look at God. What would you say is the true essence of God? A lot of people would say they think of the truest essence of God as love. Yes, the Bible says that God is love, and no genuine believer will argue that love is not an attribute of God. Truly speaking, love is an attribute of God that cannot be undermined by any believer. As a matter of fact, love is the foundation of the salvation of the entire human race, as stated in John chapter 3, verse 16. But I don't believe love is the true essence of God. From studying the Bible, it's becoming more and more apparent to that the true essence of God is holiness. How many times in the Bible is God called love? God is love. But over and over again, we read about the holiness of God. Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Psalm chapter 22 verse 3. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 15. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. It is true that God loves everyone, even sinners alike. Although He hates sin, but no sinner can ever make heaven or see the kingdom of God just because he or she is loved by God. The reason is because of the truest essence of God, which is holiness. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13 says, Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue, when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he. So we see that God's holiness restrains him from deploying the fullest act of his love towards people that are sinful. God's eyes are too holy to look on sin, neither can anything filthy survive his presence. The reason the Bible says that the righteousness of a person is like a filthy rag before the Lord is not because the righteousness of person is entirely worthless before God, but when the righteousness of a person is weighed on the scale of God's holy nature, it becomes as nothing. That is the extent to which God's holiness can be defined and expressed. For instance, a holy person or who can live in the same house with a sinner while the both of them would continue to express their righteous and unrighteous lifestyles independently. However, that is not the case with God. Whenever God comes into a place, sin is judged automatically. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. For our God is a consuming fire. The holiness of God is why God is a consuming fire. For it burns up anything unholy. The holiness of God separates him from sinful man. God is not wicked, neither is he a tyrant. It is only that his holiness has the characteristic of judgment. The reason God told Moses to put a barricade at the foot of Mount Sinai so that the Israelites will not come near it was explained in Exodus chapter 19 verses 21 to 22, which reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down. 
charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. Also, we see from Psalms chapter 24 verses 3 to 4 that it takes a holy people to stand before a holy God. The presence of God has zero tolerance for sin and impurity. In the vision of Isaiah, he was opportune to see the temple of the Lord. Significantly, he spoke about the holiness of God. In the book of Isaiah, he saw a corrupt nation full of evil, a nation full of blind evil doers rebelling against God. He has a vision of their sin and a vision of their corruption. And as you see in the fifth chapter of the book of Isaiah, he goes through all the sins in the body of Israel and says, Woe unto you! Woe unto you! He is looking at all the corruption in the nation. And then in the sixth chapter, his eyes are on the throne of God. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 reads, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly, and one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Did you notice these angels there around the throne of God proclaiming, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. It is notable from several passages of the Bible that all the hosts of heaven are saddled with the responsibility of proclaiming the holiness of God. The manner in which heavenly beings proclaim God's holiness shows that that is the true essence of God. They do not proclaim God's love as much as they proclaim His holiness. Revelation chapter 4 verse 8 records how four heavenly beasts worship the Lord in this word. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. God is holy, and we must be holy if we would resign with him in eternity. We have been given a commandment. Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. This is not an option. This not a suggestion. We are told to be holy. This call for holiness is not optional through our lives often reflect that attitude. Contrary to popular belief, holiness is not a thing of the past. Righteousness and holiness is still required. One day, you will stand before this holy God. You will see and hear the angels bowing down before him and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, and your life will be reviewed every second of every minute of every hour. What will you say then for your life? Every unholy act, every unholy deed will be examined, and you won't be able to say you didn't know because you do. Even if you had never listened to me today, God gave you consciousness, which knows right from wrong, holiness from unholiness. I am just here today just to remind you, please live your life knowing that one day you will have to stand in front of a holy God and your life will be reviewed by the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Make sure that life is a holy one. Are you feeling down and you don't feel as if there is hope for you anymore? I want to tell you that God is with you. Losing a family member, especially the ones who are the dearest to you, brings fear, anger and pain at the same time. Don't give up on God because He will never give up on you. He will be your comforter. He will be with you. He will go with you through the heartbreaks. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Why can't you just find trust in Him and allow Him to be your comforter? He loves you. Listen to the words of Jesus. Right now, Jesus is preparing a place for you. John 14 verse 1 to 6 Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, 
and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.